Okay, so you wrote about the dark triad in Psychology Today and in Quillette. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was Psychology Today. Oh, yeah. Dark personalities are more likely to signal victimhood. Mm -hmm. So so that surprises me a bit because I always thought that it was more agreeable people that tended towards being victims. But that's not what this suggests? Well, it's it's a little bit tricky. So... The that paper it was a fascinating paper. I think it was published in 2020 uh, in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. Uh, you know, a series of very interesting studies, and they weren't claiming. So the researchers were not claiming based on the studies that they ran that uh, actual victims score higher on dark triad personality traits. Well, what they were claiming is that people who tend to score high on dark triad personality traits tend to signal victimhood more. And signaling victimhood is not necessarily the same thing as actually being a victim, right? And so people who are truly um, sort of the, the the targets of misfortune or suffering have really gone through bad things. Those aren't the people who you know tend to be narcissists or psychopaths, but the people who tend to be you know, narcissists and psychopaths uh, will sort of exploit people's empathy and sort of exploit people's willingness to help suffering people uh, by, by playing a victim. And so, you know, of course, they ran the, the standard um, dark triad uh, scales, sort of asking people various questions about how they um, interact with other people and how they move through the world, whether they tend to be cold and calculating and so forth, whether they're sort of uh, believe themselves to be more important than other people. But then they also um, created a, a victim, a victim signaling scale and it included items like, you know, I tend to uh, want to broadcast that people like me are, are sort of not as well known as we should be or how, you know, more people who are like me need to be um, represented in the media or, or um, mm. in sort of the, the public conversation, basically like, you know, they're, they're, they're put upon, they're sort of suffering in some way and, and they tended to highly correlate. So the higher you are in dark triad, the more signaling you do um, in terms of, of victimhood signaling. So they also found some interesting, uh, it wasn't just correlational studies, so they weren't just administering scales and finding that they tended to correlate. They were also doing experimental studies as well. Um, basically, uh, in one of the studies, what they did was uh, the, the psychologists uh, rigged a game in which participants could uh, win some money. But what the psychologist did was um, rigged it so that it was really easy to cheat and it was really easy for them to figure out who cheated. And first they had people play this game. Uh, they tracked who cheated in the game to win more money. Um, and they, they also had these participants take the, um, the dark triad personality scale. And they found that the people who scored highly on this scale also were more likely to cheat to win more money at this game. Um, they also did these interesting studies where they um, basically imagined the participants to envision themselves in, um, in a sort of uh, an employment scenario. So they have a colleague at work who, and, and they're described as being a little bit unpleasant to be around and maybe they don't like them very much and so on. So this is the person they're imagining. But then the researchers asked the participants, um, you know, uh, how much do you agree with these, with these items, these statements? Like, you know, this colleague insults you all the time. Uh, this colleague has taken advantage of you. And all of these things, this, this, this colleague has done bad things to you, this colleague needs to be fired. Nothing in the description of this person in this sort of scenario indicated that they had ever insulted the participant, that they had ever um, done anything wrong to them. But they basically, the scenario was like, this person, you just don't like them very much, right? right? Um, and, and again, the researchers found that people who score high on dark triad are more likely to exaggerate or fabricate negative qualities about this other person uh, and say how bad, badly they've been treated by them. Huh. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they actually believe that or not. Has there been any, like, is it full on lying? Is it, is it to get somewhere or do they switch that in their head so they think that they've been insulted? Yeah. I don't even know if, uh, like it, it's an interesting question, but you know, I'm, not, I'm not, I may not matter because the outcome is such that this is how they behave. And you know, the, the, the researchers uh, in that paper, you know, they document how, you know, uh, findings from from insurance fraud claims, right? Like, you know, some some X number of millions or billions of dollars every year um, are lost because of people who are fraudulently filing insurance claim, you know, people who um, uh, claim that they can't seek employment. And so basically a lot of people will sort of exploit weaknesses in various systems in order to extract uh, economic gain or, or whatever kind of gain happens to be. But 
you know, people who score highly on the dark triad, they are they tend to be more preoccupied with with status, with sexual rewards, so material rewards, social rewards, sexual rewards, and whatever environment they happen to find themselves in, they will um, enact the strategies to extract those rewards. So if they happen to be, say, in you know, the modern West in the year 2022, they might find that, oh, the best strategy to extract rewards is to signal victimhood. And so that's what they'll do to sort of uh, exploit the weaknesses in the system. But if they're somewhere else, you know, maybe being a, an extreme narcissist might be the best way to do mm -hmm. it. So they'll sort of lean into that. And that's the best way to, to get attention, to get romantic partners or whatever it happens to be. So they tend to be very good um, at sort of picking up on, you know, what are the what are the ways uh, to maximize those rewards in whatever social environment they happen to be in? Okay. So th that's very interesting, but that type of person sounds like an unattractive type of person, right? Anyone who's signaling victimhood without actually being a victim. I don't think anyone finds that attractive. However, according to what, like what you wrote, women are more attracted to people who score higher in these dark triad personality traits. Yeah. Well, that was a study, um, I want to say it was from 2015, uh, this team of researchers, um, they had some women evaluate uh, a man, uh, basically his suitability as a romantic partner. And what they found is that men who score highly on the dark triad relative to an ordinary man, so an average guy versus a guy who's really high on the dark triad, they score the, the dark triad guy um, to be quite a bit more attractive. So one standard deviation more attractive than the average. Mm -hmm. And a standard deviation is, is, is a lot in, in psychological research, uh, that sort of uh, that gap. Um, I'd imagine, I can't remember the specific details of how they sort of characterize this guy, this dark triad guy, but I'd imagine they weren't saying like, he you know talks about how he's a victim or whatever. Yeah. Um, they probably talk about how he tends to be um, sort of superficially charming and maybe a little bit callous and uncaring and, and emotionally distant and these kinds of things. And something else I, I had written in that, in that article, sort of summarizing a lot of this research, um, just Justin Miller, who's a, a sexual psychologist, uh, wrote a book called Tell Me What You Want about uh, sexual fantasies. And he writes about how uh, the most fantasized about superheroes among women, uh, the most fantasized superhero is Batman, uh, which is uh, an interesting contrast with the most fantasized superhero among gay men, which which are uh, Captain America and Superman. And I found ah. that kind of that that that, uh, that difference to be interesting, right? Because like Superman and Captain America are like these uh, goody two shoes Boy Scouts, like you know these are the the guys that little boys look up to as like the the sort of like the 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 the, the most uh, pure and noble superheroes. And I think Batman is often seen as like the sort of darker, edgier, you know, like almost like he's a villain, but he still does the right thing. But you could imagine him going to the dark side. And this is the guy that that uh, women, you know, of all the superheroes, that's the one that they seem to like the most. That's so funny. Mm. That's so funny. I never liked Captain America. It's like that guy's Superman? boring. Oh, <laughs> Superman too. Well, Superman mostly because it's like he he can do everything. Mm. So he's just, he's going to win. Right. It's like, okay. it's too old of a superhero. There's no weakness there. What's his weak? I guess kryptonite is the weakness, but I mean, come on. Mm. <laughs> One thing I would be curious about, I don't know of any research on this, but um, I don't know. Did you see that new James Bond movie, No Time to Die? Is that the newest one? The newest one with Daniel out? Craig. Yeah, it came I out like a couple months ago. Okay, no, I haven't. I really want to see that. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was good. It's not like the best James Bond ever, but I, I thought it was really good. Um, but one of the things that's interesting about the this the Bond series is how like the sort of the earlier Bond movies were sort of more um, campy, a little bit. There was a little bit more humor in them. But starting with the latest Bond with Daniel Craig, uh, like the series took this more sort of darker, edgier turn, and the Daniel Craig Bond. Um, he he gets injured more. Mm -hmm. He's more vulnerable. He gets beaten up. Um, you can sort of see the physical effects throughout the, the movie of him sort of becoming more and more damaged. And he himself is sort of a more edgy and rough character. And I, I would love to see, you know, if there's any data on like maybe 30 years ago, whoever was Bond 30 years ago, how did women feel about that Bond versus the Bond today and see like if which James Bond is like the most appealing to, to, to women or to, to viewers in general? Yeah. Or if that has changed, right? 
I mean, mm. maybe it was the same percentage of women back then as it is now, but women now don't find that attractive. Oh, that's a good point too. Yep. Yeah.